This MedMod video will focus on the difference between the prolate and oblate corneal shape and how that might contribute to your contact lens selection. Let's look at this very normal with the rule cornea. Here we have a prolate cornea, steepest in the center, flattest toward the periphery. And that's seen on the graph below across this white line. As we go from the steepest curvature in the center to the flatter curvature toward the peripheral cornea and limbus, we see this constant change in eye shape. And that's given as an E value that you see here, the flat meridian E value, 0.72, the steep meridian E value, slightly less, 0.59. In other words, there's a higher rate of flattening across the flat meridian of the cornea. There's a lower rate of flattening across the steep meridian of the cornea, and that's why you have a difference between these two values. Eccentricity can be very good at describing the normal corneal shape and this rate of flattening. It's good at describing the prolate eye. It cannot describe the oblate eye, the eye that's reverse in shape flattest in the center and steepest toward the periphery. This prolate eye would be considered a very normal shape and very straightforward in terms of contact lens fitting. This patient should fit into virtually any conventional contact lens soft or rigid lens construction. Now let's look at another case. Here we have a keratoconic patient with an incredibly high central corneal astigmatism, a very steep cornea, all the disease detection indices lit up in red. Now, is this a prolate eye or an oblate eye? And again, this eye is steepest in the center, flattest toward the periphery, and that's seen on the graph down below, steepest in the center, flattest toward the periphery. The difference is for this diseased eye, there's a much higher rate of flattening and an asymmetric rate of flattening between the various directions we might head. We notice in the eccentricity value, we have a 1.19 E value on the flat, a 1.17 eccentricity on the steep. So a much higher E value. This patient would be considered a very elliptical surface, but again, not an oblate eye shape where the eye is flattest in the center and steepest toward the periphery. The difference here is this patient would need an incredibly specialized lens to account for this high rate of corneal flattening. Therefore, it may be likely that we'll need a steep central base curve in a corneal GP with a very aggressively flat peripheral curve system, again, to account to this high eccentricity, this high rate of change toward the periphery. Our contact lens must account for this significant shift in curvature between the center and the periphery. And this is why these irregular corneal patients often need specialty contact lenses. They don't need conventional or they can't be fit into conventional constructed GP lenses. Now let's look at our third case. And here we have a patient where things look different. Instead of the center being the steepest curvature, the center is near to the flattest curvature. Then the cornea steepens up in the mid periphery before beginning to flatten out again toward the limbus. So this is your oblate surface. This is the cornea that's reverse geometry and shape. Instead of steepest in the center, we're flattest in the center. Instead of flatter toward the mid periphery, we're steeper toward the mid periphery. Now in cases like this, we cannot use eccentricity to describe an oblate surface. E value can only describe a prolate eye, relatively normal eye or an eye that has a high rate of flattening, such as a keratoconic that goes from steepest in the center to flattest in the periphery. In this case, to understand the oblate surface, we would go up to analysis and details. With this window open, let's concentrate on the third window over.
over. That's the e squared value. And e squared will provide us with an understanding of the difference between prolate and oblate surfaces. <clears throat> when you have a positive e squared value, that will describe a prolate eye. When you have a negative e squared value, that describes a oblate surface. So here in our post-LASIK patient, we see the cornea going from steepest in the center to flattest toward the periphery. And that's being described by the e squared value as a oblate, a negative e squared value. Now there may be different values between the flat meridian and the steep meridian. In this case, the steep axis has a much higher e squared value. It's more oblate than the flat axis would be. Now generally, when your e, negative e squared value is greater than 0.25, in other words, when you have a very oblate surface greater than point, negative 0.25, that would indicate that a reverse geometry lens may be called for. In other words, a conventional constructed GP lens that's steep base curve with flatter peripheral curve system will not be appropriate for this patient. We need a lens that's flattest in the center, steeper in the mid periphery, and flat as you go out toward the far periphery of the lens. So this is a reverse geometry shape construction. Again, when your E squared value is lower than negative 0.25, then you might find that a regular geometry lens, steepest in the center, may just be able to manage the oblate surface that you're dealing with. So the more oblate, the more likely you're to need a reverse geometry or a very specialized lens 